get there. Moving on. The Pittsburgh Steelers, nine and set well, nine, six, and one last year. Uh did not make the they, they didn't win nine, did they? Nope. No, they were, they went eight, six, and one. Yep, and didn't make the playoffs. That's it. I swear when I write these things down sometimes. The I don't the, know. the the tie game always messes you up. Yeah, it really does. All right. So uh nine no nine eight seven and one. Eight, seven, and one. Boom. Division champs, they'd be plus 140 at Vegas right now. Strength of schedule is number 26. Uh, they're going to face a projected 127 wins. Turnover margin, they were 28th in the league last year at minus 11. Head coach is Mike Tomlin. Uh, the offense coordinator, Randy Feedner. Defense coordinator, Keith Butler. Uh, all those are the same as they were. Over under is 9.5. To go over is minus 120. To go under is even money, plus 100. They are a projected favorite in 10 games this year. They brought in wide receiver Dante Moncrief. Uh, he's not the talent that A.B. was, uh, but Antonio Brown is is a different kind of beast. They signed cornerback Steven Nelson and inside linebacker Mark Barron this year. Uh, I feel like this year might be addition by subtraction with getting rid of the, the turmoil, good word that you used earlier, with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. Uh, you get kind of the crazy, the the turbulence out of the room, and I think it could be better for everybody. They were number five in total yards per play last year, 6.1. They were number six in defensive yards per play, gave up 5.3 last year. I like this team a lot more this year without all the mess. I think they are back to just focusing on football. They got something else to play for now. Uh, the wide receivers coach going into the second year, we just found this out. Uh, just passed away this morning, right? Um, so they they've got something to play for there. I've got them at ten and six. I I think the schedule sets up well for them. I think they're mad about what happened last year. I think they're glad to be rid of the the locker room cancers that they had, and I think they're going to be better for it. So it's interesting that you say they're glad to be rid of the locker room cancers. I think there is addition by subtraction when some things happen. The problem is, is they had Le'Veon Bell gone last year. Yeah, he was it, never in the locker room, and he never was there, and that didn't make him better. They missed the playoffs for the first no, 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 time. No, no. God but they, knows how long. But they thought that he was going to be reporting. Even it doesn't matter. He never showed he, up. Agreed, he was but, never but, in the locker room. But then it became a thing where the current players were talking about him in the media, and they kept getting asked about it. It's it's at some added point, pressure. At some point in time, weight. when they step on Sunday Field, they never went into a game thinking he was going to be there. Okay, and they and they underachieved massively, and that's with Antonio Brown having still a pretty great season. Now, not your typical Antonio Brown season, no, but still a pretty great but, season. But didn't even show Losing, up for week seventeen. That's week seventeen is irrelevant though. Eh, I mean, so, yeah, you're playing for a possible playoff berth. If if your Brownies knocked off the Ravens, they were in the playoffs. Here's here's my issue with this team. You got rid of two divas. You're absolutely right. You got rid of those yeah. two guys. You still got one diva on the team, and that's Big Ben. Yeah. He has – I don't – and the problem is, is the organization wants to make him the only leader in the locker room. They've made that clear. They've openly came out and said, like like verbally backed him being the, the face of leadership in this locker room. I don't think that he can lead. I don't think people are going to really follow him. I think he comes across as very fake all the time. He goes on the media saying, Antonio Brown's got to stop talking to the media. Le'Veon Bell's got to stop doing this to the media. But then it's okay for him the next day to go out and call out other players. Like, wait a minute. You can't say that one guy can't do it and then you do it. This is He's, he's inconsistent as hell when it comes to leadership qualities. On the field, dude's got a cannon. Juju Smith-Schuster, the only receiver that scares me. Moncrief, and close to what Moncrief used to be. He's not going to be what Juju was last year if we yeah. think he's just going to take that second role. Okay. I don't think Washington's going to be that. I don't think any of the rookies are going to be that. I think Juju has the potential to set all kinds of receiving records this year. I don't know that much else scares me on this offense. Their defense was good, not great last year. I don't know how improved they're going to be. I think this is an 8-8 eight and eight team. And I think... Their biggest problem is still leadership. I think they still have – they won't have drama like they've had before, 
because they don't have stars that have that kind of power or influence right now. But but Big Ben is still a diva. Okay. And he's still running that locker room. And and I, I just don't know that I would put that much power and influence in him. Okay. Uh, now, of course, at the end of the week, in case you were curious, we're going to give out our Super Bowl picks, our favorite over-unders as far as Vegas betting lines. Uh, we're going to give out our playoff picks, etc. So make sure you tune in for Friday.